Alright, welcome to a brand new playthrough of Audio Describe Gaming. I'm your host, Matt. Playing something new for you guys. This is Dynasty Warriors 8 Empires. So I'm going to explain, essentially, how this game works. Uh, it's based on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which is a Chinese novel taking place in ancient China. It's basically their version of Game of Thrones, so to speak. It's like kingdoms betraying each other and fighting each other and all that stuff. Anyway, with Dynasty Warriors, it's an open warfare game, so you're fighting in real big battles, and they tend to be very cheesy, like it's you up against like a hundred guys, and you're just, you're just, you know, just bringing the hurt. No, I don't want to watch a cutscene. Anyway, but with Empires, there's a lot of strategy involved, so you have to actually plan out, um, like you, you have your own kingdom, and you can actually plan out how to conquer it and everything, or you know, conquer the map and everything. So I'm actually going to play as myself, and I mean that literally. I made a character that looks like me. I'm the leader of my own kingdom. I'm going to tell you essentially how this works. I've created my own custom kingdoms and my own custom characters, so I'm not using uh, a lot of characters from Dynasty Warriors. So I got my War Council here, and I'm going to. Uh, start prioritizing. So I want to focus on personnel, then finances. I'm not going to battle just yet. Uh, oh, and all of this is in Japanese except for the text, so just don't worry about what they're saying. So let me see. Uh, there are tasks that I can assign myself, uh, and I get merit for that. And the more merit you have, the more people can take you seriously across the world. So I'm going to recruit an officer, build a weapon forge, and build an item shop. So I have to do that within a certain amount of time. Alright, uh, so I'm going to talk about my characters first. So, uh, the, the leader of this kingdom, there are five kingdoms total. The leader of the kingdom I'm playing as is actually modeled after me, so kind of skinnier guy with uh, short dark hair, glasses. I even gave myself headphones. Now my war council... Uh, let me see. So, my war council. So my marshal is a guy named George, all exclamation points. So here's the thing. Everyone in my War Council is based off of some of the original people who really started supporting my channel. So George, in all caps, is actually a fellow YouTuber. We subscribe to each other. Anyway, the reason his name is George, in all caps, with exclamation points, is because when I was dishing out what I wanted all of everyone's names to be, uh, he was not present, and the first person who spoke up uh, when I said, I'm just going to leave it to you guys, just shouted out George, uh, and I'm like, alright, his name is George. So he's kind of athletic looking guy with nunchucks. Next is my strategist, Esther. So she is very tall and thin with long uh, dark hair and she wears robes and uh, carries this like long staff, like a wizard staff. Now there's my prefects. Uh, the first is Chaos. He is, uh, he carries twin swords and he's got kind of shaggy dark hair and for some reason I gave him goggles that he wears on his forehead like aviator goggles I'm not really sure why I just thought it looked cool oh sorry I forgot to mention Esther has cat ears at her request that was what she wanted like the real person that she's based off of next is the ranger the ranger is um, let's see he carries a bow he, he has like a little blade of grass that he kind of chews on, and he's got like a beard and mustache and uh, some like brown hair, and he's got a headband. Next is Ninja Kitten. Uh, this is actually the person who suggested the name George. Anyway, uh, she carries twin hooks, which are like um, small one-handed swords, two of them, but they have these curvy, wicked-looking hooks on the end. And... Uh, she has like kind of ninja clothes, she covers her face, and she's got a cat on top of her head sleeping. Uh, once again, that was her request. Next is the Game Master, I called him that because this is a guy who I play games with every now and then online. Uh, he is a younger looking guy with a headband, and he he uh, fights with a deck of cards. Uh, the real Game Master that, I'm, that I've modeled this character after uh, understands why we play a lot of cards together. Uh, next, or last I should say, but not least definitely, is the Hunter, which it's a take on his real name. Uh, he also has a headband, because headbands are cool. I should have given myself a headband. I gave myself headphones instead. Anyway, uh, he has kind of like straight black hair, and he carries a sword that he uses backhanded, and it actually ignites in flames uh, when he uses it. It's pretty awesome. 
So that's my war council. So let's focus on what I want to do. So I want to recruit an officer, so I can only recruit um, like wanderers and stuff that are in territory that I own. So let me see who I can... Let me see who I can get from here. I don't have a lot of money to get a lot of uh, big name people. But if there's any really good officers from the Dynasty Warriors universe that I can recruit, I will. I just need to I just need to get that off of my uh, list for things to do. No one good that I can really afford. I'm just going to recruit someone that doesn't cost a whole lot of money. Alright, let's see. There's this guy named Wang Ji. Let's just get him. Oh, and he turned down my offer. Alright, well, I might as well just build up my influence a little bit. That seems to be the next good thing to do. So let's, let's build junk. Construct a facility. All right, there's vacant land here. I'm going to build that weapon forge that I wanted. And I'm going to build the item shop. Oh, the people in one of my provinces are very happy. Good. Construct another facility. There's some vacant land here. I can't build an item shop. I don't have the funds for it. Okay. I'll do that in a little bit. Let me trade and see if I can get some more funds then. making a little money. Alright, now I can purchase it. Uh, where's that vacant land? Here it is. Item shop. And now I'm gonna buy some weapons and items. That sounds good. Oh, what's Chaos saying? Oh, he wants to recruit someone. Good. Good on you, Chaos, for doing the job for me. Alright. So let's buy weapons. And items. Hmm, yeah, I want that. Increases life gauge, increases attack, increases defense. That's all I can afford right now. Let's invade something. So let's see, how are, how's my troop strength? Actually, extremely low. Extremely, extremely low. I don't want to invade anything right now. Um, let me see. I can levy troops. Oh, I can conscript troops is what it's called. So let's get some troops. Let's see. Can I try recruiting another officer? There's this guy named Wong Fang. Oh, he's on my team. All right, so that cro that uh, crosses off that on my list. That'll increase my uh, my influence, which is good. All right, I completed all my strategy objectives. I got more merit. All right, let's begin my war council. Once it, personnel and finances. I'm not going to focus on battle right now. All right, what what do I want to build? An Build an item shop, recruit an officer. Yeah, that's all I want to do. So let's recruit more officers. Is there anyone that's like really good that I can get? Not really, I don't have the money. I'll trade. All right, let me see if I can construct anything new. There's some vacant land here. I can do another item shop. And then I want to do another weapon shop. Ooh, Ninja Kitten did some uh, humanitarian work. That's good. Let's see if I can purchase anything more from the item shop. Increases speed. Ooh, doubles effects of recovery items. That's what I want. Alright, my troop strength has actually gotten better than the... Alright, so I gotta tell you about the other kingdoms. Sorry, I forgot about that. So, I've, like I said, I've created a bunch of custom characters. So, to my... I'm in the northwest of the map. 
in the northeast of the map is a kingdom filled with um, characters from the Brandon Sanderson Cosmere universe, because why the heck not, ruled by Dalinar, of course, from the Stormlight Archive. Uh, to my immediate south is the Game of Thrones Kingdom, ruled by Daenerys Targaryen. To my east is, I call it the Anime Kingdom. It's actually comprised of characters from two different franchises. One is actually not an anime. I got characters from the uh, show Steven Universe. It's the three crystal gems, but there's only three of them. So I had to pad it with some other characters. So I got the five girls from Puella Mad Madoka Magica, that really awesome show if you guys ever watch it. It's real short. And then finally, to my south, a very large kingdom. It is the Avatar The Last Airbender Kingdom, uh, commanded by Aang. So, those are the kingdoms. And yes, I am a huge nerd. Uh, I want to eventually do more custom uh, groups like that, but for now, that's all I have. So, let's see. I actually have a pretty good troop strength compared to the Game of Thrones kingdom, so I'm going to declare war on them. So, let's invade one of their provinces. Alright, my war council. I gotta allocate troops to them. So, each one of them will have a unit of troops under their uh, command. This is going to be a pretty even fight. We're pretty evenly matched. But let's just do it. Alright, so I'm going to equip uh, my better sword and my items. All of those items that I purchased. That'll make me a bit stronger. And this is only the first battle. Um, as the war goes on, um, the enemies will actually get a little bit stronger. So I'll, I will let you guys know what I got going on here. So I have six camps under my control. The enemy has eight. Oof, this is going to be rough. We are very evenly matched. This territory is called Hanjong. Let's do it. So my goal is to take all the enemy camps and to defeat the enemy commander. And from there I can actually uh, I can take them prisoner and I can recruit them release them or kill them. I refuse to execute anyone that I capture because I'm not that kind of leader. Um, so let's do it. My officers are going to be on the battlefield with me as well, so it's a big open war. Alright. So let's see which officers I'm fighting first. Ooh, Egret. And a random Dynasty Warriors character. So it looks like the Game of Thrones Kingdom has been recruiting as well. If there's any big-name Dynasty Warriors characters that I encounter later on, I will let you know their names, but if they're just real small-time, I'm not going to worry about it. So it looks like the Ranger is here backing me up. And uh, a bow was his request, I believe. I don't think I just gave him a bow because... I don't like playing as characters with bows, but I like having characters with bows on my side because they have that good ranged ability. Alright. I have issued orders to my troops to have them essentially just attack the way they see fit. They tend to do a pretty good job on medium difficulty. So on very easy mode, you don't even have to upgrade your equipment at all, and you can win. It's totally brainless. With medium mode, it's challenging. Like, it's still easy enough that it's not going to kill you, but it's challenging enough that you actually do have to strategize a bit. Medium difficulty is perfect. Uh, one time, when I first played this game, I didn't know I could upgrade my weapons, and I played on medium difficulty, and it was ridiculously hard. Alright, Egret's back in the fold. So the bases are essentially fortified by the other bases, so if there's a base that has other bases surrounding it, like these little camps, I can't take it unless I've taken at least one base that is fortifying it. So uh, it just keeps you from going straight to the enemy camp, taking it and killing their leader and just, oh hey, we're done. Also, the more bases that you have, the stronger your forces become, and the weaker the enemy forces become, but it works in a territorial format, meaning that the closer you get to my main base, the stronger my guys are. Uh, and then as I continue to take bases, uh, my troops become stronger and stronger as they fan out from the main base, and the enemy becomes weaker. It's pretty neat. It's a really cool idea. So, it, once again, if I go straight to the base camp, the enemy will be super strong because I'll be deep behind their lines and they'll be well fortified and all that. Whereas, if they were to go straight to my base camp, my troops would be way stronger in that, that area. But the more bases I take, uh, the more the enemy gets kind of thinned out and weakened. 
Alright, so I've captured a base. Oh! Dynasty Warriors officer here. So by killing their officers, it uh, really sets them back. So I killed that one. I mean, technically you don't kill anyone in this game unless you choose to execute them, which I never do. But I'm going to help my officers take out the enemy officers and grab some of these base camps because uh, a lot of my guys are honing in on the enemy's main base and it's still it's still pretty fortified. Anyway, so this area, I want to kind of describe it. It's a lot of canyons and there are a lot of small fortresses that... Um, that the base camps are kind of fortified by like walls and stuff. This area is not as interesting as some of the others out there. Ooh, a couple good officers here. Egret, Jon Snow, Jamie Lannister. If you guys have never seen Game of Thrones or read Song of Ice and Fire, you guys probably have no idea who these guys are, but this is more for me and my team than anyone. When I refer to my team, I mean, you know, the people who first supported my channel. The ones that these characters are modeled after. Alright, we've almost taken this base camp. That should help a lot. Alright, we've taken it. Alright. A couple of my officers... Alright, yeah. Uh, the officers that took this uh, base are now splitting up. I'm going to go with one of the groups. Looks like Game Master and Ninja Kitten. We're going to take base together, the three of us. And then two of my other officers are going to take another base. This base doesn't have too many people defending it. We'll, we'll have taken it very quickly. There are base captains too, so essentially to capture a base, there's a certain number of troops defending it, and you have to kill that number of troops, and then the rest of them will retreat, and the base will then be surrounded by uh, my forces. But there are characters called base captains, and if I kill them, I actually, uh, I actually uh, dwindle their numbers faster. Not much faster, but it, it counts. All right, only about 10 more guys left to beat. Let me take this base, Captain. All right, we got the base. All right. The enemy's reinforces or reinforcements are dwindling. It's good. All right, who's here? Esther's already here working on this base. And I got Game Master and Ninja Kit and a reinforcer. Excellent. Actually, you know what? You guys are good to do this yourself. There's not enough enemies for all of us to have some. So I'm going to go after another base by myself and take it. Because I have another group of officers going after a, going after yet another base. Ooh, tons of officers at the main base camp. Once I take this base on my own, I'm going to uh, help my guys out at the main base. About 150 guys left at this camp. Oh, my guys are losing horribly at the main base camp, but I, I really shouldn't go there just yet. I need to, I need to take these bases so that my guys can get stronger behind the, uh, in the enemy's territory. All right, a couple of my officers took a base so the other base shouldn't be far behind, and this one's almost captured. Alright, yeah, oh dang, my guy's horribly lost at the enemy's base camp. Alright, I'm gonna have to take out a whole bunch of officers now, because now the enemy's going on the offensive. Alright, they're going after one of my base camps. I gotta stop them before they capture it, because it's gonna take a bit of effort to recapture it. There's like five of them. But thankfully, my Muso gauge is full, so I can do my ultimate attack on them. 
Oh, there's a lot of guys. All right. Eddard Stark. Let's take you out, buddy. Awesome. Got him and, and the other officer. Good. All right. Let's converge on the enemy's base camp now, because that's the, their main base is all they have left. Excellent. And I have a lot of reinforcements, so we've, we've got them. Oh, hey, we took their main base camp. We just have to defeat their commander now. Let's see, who's their commander? Brian of Tarth. We meet at last. Ugh. Did I get her? No, she's still here. So in order to, to win a uh, battle... Oh, she killed me. You can die once and be okay. Oh, no, I'm still alive. I'm hanging on by a thread. Oh, now she killed me. Anyway, so uh, you, you can die once in the game and be o or per battle and be okay. So that was my one. But anyway, the way to win uh, on a map is to... Um, uh, is to kill the enemy, sorry, not kill, to defeat the enemy commander. Uh, and you can do that by either just conquering uh, camps and going straight for the main one and taking her out, or do what I did and just conquer the entire map. Do I have any more coffee? Yeah, I'll finish my coffee while I'm walking all the way towards their camp. Because when you die, you respawn all the way back at your own main camp, which is on the complete other side of the map. Technically, I could get like a warhorse or something, but I don't like fighting uh, mounted. So I just like to walk everywhere. Brian's health was real low before I died, so I can probably take her out pretty quick. All, right, all my guys are here, and I have a bunch of uh, soldiers on horses, which is pretty sweet. All right, Brian, where'd you go? There she is. My guys are everywhere. We're basically just surrounding the base. There she is. Let's take you out. Oh, yeah, she's hanging on by a thread, and I just, I just beat her. Yay, I won! Alright, let's see. Oh, I captured Egret. Oh, and I could not recruit her. I got Oberyn. Excellent. So, yeah, at the end of a battle, you can choose to recruit, release, or execute soldiers. I will only recruit or release. I will never execute. Alright. And I'm going to save real quick. Save over my old file. Let me see how I'm doing on time. I got time. I can probably do one more battle. My troop strength is getting pretty good. Uh, so let's put it this way. So Game of Thrones Kingdom has the weakest strength. I have the second weakest. And everybody else is like crazy balls to the wall strong. Uh, so let's take out... Uh, yeah, let's invade another Game of Thrones territory. My team still has the greatest troop strength. If they fight too many times, you have to give them a rest. I'm doing okay. Ooh, we're going to have a huge advantage in this fight. All right, so... Hang on. I don't have a lot of troops. This battle is going to uh, exhaust my troops. There we go. Oh, God, butterfingers. All right, that's what I want to do. All right, so we, we have a distinct advantage in this battle. The enemy has six camps. I have eight, so it's a reverse of what it was last time. So let's see what this uh, let's see what this battlefield looks like. 
Looks like uh, some woods. Okay. Ooh, enemy officers coming for me. Looks like there's a village up here. I'm gonna head to that real quick because there's an officer, enemy officer coming from it. Most of the enemy is in the northwest, and then I'm ringing like the southwest, east, and northeast. We gotta take the center. That seems like a pretty good strategy. All right, so George is here fighting Eddard Stark. So technically, I could probably go straight for the enemy capital, but the capital's always notoriously way better defended. Oh, is he is he invincible? Eddard got temporary invincibility. Ooh. All right, it dropped. Anyway, um, and then if you attack the if you attack the capital province without attacking any of the others, um, they can request reinforcements from those provinces. So I like to whittle the territories down one by one. Now, if you if you attack the capital and you defeat the enemy leader there, one of two things could happen. You could either do a sweeping victory and take every single territory that the enemy had for your own. Or some of those territories may splinter off, and several of the uh, several of the uh, lesser lords will actually become the leaders of those kingdoms. It's kind of cool. It's random, so there's no real t there's no telling uh, how it's gonna play out. All right, the enemy officers are starting to go on the offensive now because we've got our act together. Oh yeah, let's delegate. Alright, we took one of their camps. Uh, I'm gonna backtrack, because two officers are going after my uh, home territory. I'm gonna help them out. And then there's a bunch of officers going after some of my guys who are on the offensive, but uh, I got a bunch of officers reinforcing them, so maybe it'll work out. I don't know. Oh, we captured another base. Excellent. Yeah, we've, we've turned the tide. Awesome. If we can take out the rest of these officers, uh, then victory will be in our hands for this territory. Alright, Jon Snow and a Dynasty Warriors character. Jon Snow is the weaker one, so I'll see if I can take him out first. Got him. Alright, let's go after this other guy now. So right now I'm like super strong because uh, I have weapons that I shouldn't have at this point in the game. It's only just one beyond the default weapon, but still pretty good. Oh hey, my uh, in, uh, my guys all grouped together and defeated all the rest of the enemy officers. Excellent. So now we just have to take out the bases that are reinforcing the main camp. So there are two. We need to take out at least one and then we can head for the camp. But I'm going to take out as many as possible because the enemy is still pretty strong in this area. So I need to take out these bases and weaken them. Weakness. All right, I, I took a base, and some bases actually have special properties. Uh, this one that I took actually increases our defense a little bit. So now the enemy is starting to look a little blue in, in their own territory, which is good. Uh, but my guys are all going after the enemy's main base camp. I'm going to go after their secondary one on the side here, because that will make taking their enemy base camp even easier. And Brianna Tarth, once again, is defending the base. Because she's like, I guess she's like the expeditionary captain or something, so she defends the main camps in all of the uh, battles. Nice. Um, I just defeated 700 enemies. It's ridiculous. Once I make more money. I'm gonna start recruiting some of the high, uh, some of the high-profile Dynasty Warriors characters, because a lot of them are real good too, like the the main characters essentially. All right, let's go after the main camp now. 
the enemy should be pretty weak in their own territory now. Technically, other than their main base camp, they don't have any more territory on this uh, section. Ooh. Brian, are you coming to meet me in battle? There she is. Alright, I beat her. That's another territory in the bag. Eddard Stark. Sweet, I recruited him. Not Jon Snow. Okay. Got a Dynasty Warriors character. Yep, Eddard Stark and two Dynasty Warriors characters. Sweet. Low profile ones, but still. <laughs> Not bad. Alright. Excellent. And my people are happy, which is also a plus. Alright, how am I doing on time? That's pretty much all the time I have, so I'm going to stop here, and I'll see you guys next time.